Dragon Gate Network. Today, we are going to review some classic Dragon Gate matches. And this one will be from 2012, Dead or Alive 2012. And this is an Open the Brave Gate Championship between uh, Dragon Kid and Reiko Sing. The champion going into this match was Ricochet, the challenger was Dragon Kid. And this is in Dragon Kid's hometown of Nagoya at Dead or Alive 2012. And uh, these two had several matches together over the Brave Gate Championship. And from the two of them, this was the, their favorite out of them. Ricochet, I remember back when the match happened, he told me that it was one of his favorite matches of all time. And Dragon Kid, of course, in his hometown. Uh, Ricochet was Brave Gate champion for about seven months at this point. He had defeated Pac to become champion the previous year, and he had been running through some of the top names in the Brave Gate division, Ricky Doi, KZ, and others. And now he was facing the second ever Open the Brave Gate Championship in his hometown. So that, again, this is Ricochet defending the Open the Brave Gate Championship against Dragon Kid from Dead or Alive 2012. Enjoy. All right, hello, Dragon Kid Network. Welcome back to our series where we give English commentary for some of the classic matches in Dragon Gate history. Today we are going back to Dead or Alive 2012, May, May 6th from IC Prefectural Gym. This is an Open the Brave Gate Championship match. The challenger, Dragon Kid versus the champion, Ricochet. Ho oh, Ho, have you ever seen this match before? Yeah, I've seen this match before and I remember on Twitter, on and off, all the time. We got to see this match, some highlight this a bit, you know. Keep reposting, people it's retweet it all the time. It's interesting you say that because these two had several Brave Gate Championship matches, and the one that has clips going around is actually their other match. Oh, is it? <laughs> well, maybe it's this match. It's No, it's not. It's not. I'm <laughs> and, wrong. And it's, it's, interesting it's interesting that you say that because when I ask the two of them, mm -hmm. Ricochet and Dragon Kid, which of their matches they prefer, both of them say this one. As oh. opposed to the one that the clip that has the clips going or mm. going around on social media all the time. I remember Ricochet specifically right after this match happened said that uh, we were chatting about it. He said it was one of his favorite matches that he had had in his career up to that point. And then after the rematch a few months later, he said, "Nah, I, I still like the, the Nagoya match more." So this was Ricochet had been Brave Gate champion since November of the pre of uh, 2011. He had defeated Pac. Mm. Pac had been champion for over a year. He had a record setting, I think it was, what, 15 months, 11 title defenses. And during that reign, he had beaten Ricochet twice. Mm. So it was the, the third try for Ricochet at that point. You know, Pac had come to Dragon Gate in 2007 and had quickly become one of the top high flyers in the world. And, you know, Ricochet came in, his debut in Dragon Gate was 2010, and it was natural that the t you know, two incredible high flying foreigners get compared to one another, to each other, and put in, in a rivalry. So, Ricochet had, you saw during the, the opening BTR, the one. The one trump card, the one weapon that no one else has, that's the, the double moonsault. Yeah. A move that very few have been able to do, and I think Ricochet really the only one that was I've able. I, I don't remember seeing anyone other than him doing I, this kind of move. I rem remember seeing a clip of one other person, and he landed on his head and was <laughs> severely injured. Um, yeah, that's also on Twitter all the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And you know, Rick Ricochet himself doesn't uh -huh. do the move, stopped doing the move because of the danger mm -hmm. involved with it. It was one of those, you know, it's the move that brought me to the dance, so I'm going to use it as long as I need it. But once he was able to develop the other part of his game, the, the, the double moonsault was no longer no longer necessary. So he w had won the championship back in November. He had defenses over Masato Yoshino, Yuki Doi, and KZ your mainstays of the Open the Brave Gate division. This challenge was not much backstory behind this match. It was essentially, you know, this is Dragon Kid's hometown. The show was coming up. 2012 was the year of the dragon, much like we're, rec Ooh. we're recording this match in 2024. It's the year of the dragon, so good timing. That I want an opportunity, let me challenge for it, and Ricochet was happy to accept. So not much in terms of deep backstory. Uh, deja vu. Ooh. That you know, Dragon Kid was 
It's going to dive. Oh. In, in terms of creative yeah. and innovative high flyers, Dragon Kid set the so inside out Bermuda Triangle. You know, Dragon Kid had set the standard early, you know, from his debut. You know, moves like the Dragon Rana, moves like the the Deja Vu that we just saw, and it was the arrival of foreigners like Pack, like Ricochet, that took in, you know, international high flying to to a different level. And this was a match where Dragon Kid was looking to you know put his name back on the list of top high flyers. Ooh, springboard to the floor. Doing the head scissors like this, so smooth. No touch. Yeah. Dragon Kid at this time was a part of a stable called Team, Vet uh, Team Veteran. It was, as advertised on the label, it was himself, Sakimochizuki, Don Fuji, other senior members of the roster. Ricochet was a part of a unit called World One in International, along with uh, Doyoshi. He was actually teammates with Pac at this time. Pac, Ricochet, Rich Swan. Yeah. So both of them high fly, but they are different type of high fly. Different types of high fly. Ricochet flyers. do a few flip before he hit you with something. But Dragon Kid is someone who can throw our head scissors no matter which angle they're in. And when we talk about trump cards and mm. special moves, Dragon Kid has the, has his own, the Dragon Rana. Yeah. Which was another move that we, had, we hadn't seen in years. At this and point. Something like this as a stunner from, from born into the stunner. Well, that's yeah. the that's the FMW influence. Oh yeah, Masato Tanaka, Ta Masato Tanaka. Uh -huh. They were roommates. Mm -hmm. So the the springboard diamond dust is a, a tribute to Masato Tanaka. So Tanaka doing a top rope and he do it with yeah. a springboard. Uh, Dragon Kid, he said he doesn't have very many good memories of his time in, in FMW, Ooh. but he will remember the kindness of Masato Tanaka. Oh, block, blocks the Messiah. Messiah. Messiah blocked into a stunner. Another one. Counters for. Ooh. Counters upon Sit counters. On the shoulder. Mysterio Boom. Ranas dicks him. For two count. Thinking what's next for Dragon Kid. Ricochet is still the, um, the Briefgate champion at this point. The story of Ricochet coming to Dragon Kid is interesting as well. He got a message from someone. Someone saw him do the double moonsault okay. from Dragon Gate, and they sent him a message as an invitation to come to Dragon Gate. And he thought it was a prank, so he deleted the email. <laughs> and it wasn't until the open trial. Oh, Jumping high kick. It wasn't until Dragon Gate, the Dragon Gate USA Open tryouts yeah. that he showed up and did the double moon salt, and they realized, hey, you were the guy I, you know, we sent you an email years ago, and you never responded to it. And he was, he went from showing up at the open tryout, you know, which was, you know, you show up, you pay, you attend the seminar, you show us what you can do. Yeah. Maybe we'll put you in an exhibition match or a dark match on the Dragon Gate USA show. He went from the open tryout. To here in J to Dragon Gate in Japan within uh, two months, six weeks. Uh, he was thinking shooting Star Press, but Kid got to his feet. Ooh, yo. Holding on, Ricochet on the top rope. Dragon Kid has said, is someone who can throw any kind of has scissors. Yeah. Well, this is the maybe from this angle. This, this is where he usually gets an assist, but when there's no tag partner, you gotta do it on his make, own. Make some noise this way. Super Frankie oh. lands on his feet. He's just stand there. Yeah. Ricochet. No, no get time it back for up the top rope. Whoa, look at the distance! More than shooting halfway across press. the ring, high angle, Ooh. shooting star early gets two. Uh, 
landing on his feet. When Ricochet landed on his feet, there was no time for dramatic theatrics or posing to the camera. Dragon Kid had. Was so too, two count. Was too busy celebrating, and now. Two count from the shooting star press, and he got. Okay, this is what we've seen from the uh, preview videos. It can be the double moonsault. Double rotation, right? And oh, yo. Kicks him away. A move that never been and kicked this time. out of. Ah. You get hit with it, you're done. Yeah, there's more, more, more gravity, more impact when you do two ah. rotation over there and moonsault it on top of your gut. Yeah. Well, if you, if you land on your feet forward, let's try and it this no. way. Just spike the top of the head Ultra and now the spike him again. Oh. This can be it. Only gets two though. Still kicks out. Ray Cosé. 2000, 2012, this would, have, uh, this would have been Dragon Kid's 15th year in pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. Twelve years ago. Dragon Kid. And he's, now he's signaling for it. One more move from his arsenal. Now, if, if the, at this point in time in his career, if the if Ultra Hurricane Rana didn't do it, there was only one more place to go. Top rope, Dragon drop, Rana. Ooh, you, land on the fit. Get out of the way. Oh. Super draw. Oh, oh, look at that high kick. A high kick that would later turn into the Benadriller, a move that won him the Open the Dreamgate Championship. Ricochet. Exhausted. Dragon Kid as well. Oh, they come uh, poking the arm. A backslide driver. Oh. Counters it. Oh, you tried to get him up on the shoulders and he got turned into the turned into the Bible. Running. Ah, and the kick under that hat. Dragon Kid wobbling. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, open hand slap. Ducks the clothesline. The swing the wrong way around with the Messiah. Did you see that? The human body is not supposed to bend that way when your neck is bent the other way. Dragon Kid might try to get to the top rope one more time. Oh, wait a minute. What's he thinking? Ooh. I don't know what he's thinking, actually. Oh, we put both of them oh, uh, okay, I, on the top row. Now I know what it is. Let's do the super version, Ooh. not the diamond dust. Still kicks out from that. Top rope diamond dust. You see, you know, a lot of the high flying in the early portions of the match from Ricochet, that's the, the arsenal he came to Dragon Gate with. But in the, the back half, like the high kicks, the strikes, the elbows, that's. Uh, the, and this, the power. Just hold this, on. This is what he had added. And, and you know, ooh, power, power bomb into the apron. This is what he added in his time in Dragon Gate. Backslide driver. That, ooh. You know, this, this isn't the, uh, the final form of Ricochet before he would go on to go on to WWE, but this is. You know, the night, this is not the skinny kid that only had the double moonsault when he came to Dragon Gate. This is a proper evolution of Ricochet. And talking about double moonsault, 
This may and be time for him to hit this one. Kid just Top rope. Just got spiked on his head. Double rotation. Ooh, moonsault. Oh, this is. Now it's Dragon Kid turns. Got, got his opening. Say your prayers. Dragon. One spin. Rana. Boom. Picture perfect. And we've got a new Brave Gate champion. Dragon Kid. 2012 on his own hometown. In his hometown, he would go on. This reign would continue until Dead or Alive 2013. He would hold the title for a year. Rick, they had a rematch at Kobe World a few months later. They had, uh, so we're gonna switch to this camera now. So there was a rematch for the Brave Gate, and ho ho, the match that you were talking about, mm -hmm. clips that would go on social media <laughs> yeah. in, uh, in July of that year. So go head on over to the archives on the Dragon Gate Network and check that match out. Ricochet, of course, lost the title here, but he would be fine. He would go on to be win King of Gate, open the Dream Gate Championship, complete the Grand Slam in Dragon Gate before moving on. Now he's a WWE superstar, and Dragon Kid looks today just Still like he here? looks in that yeah. match. <laughs> Dragon oh, Gate he look, look, look even better. Looks even better. Yeah. So, anyway, fans, I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you again soon with more entries in this the Dragon Gate Network English Classic Series. Thank you for Thank watching. You. Dragon Gate Network!